Hi, this is Vaughan at Wesco Bell Pottery in La Have, Nova Scotia, and this is Jackie, my wife, um, and uh, Jacqueline M. Cohen, and you can uh, look up our work on the website, which is wescobellpottery.ca. Uh, but these pieces will be in this video, and a lot of times they sell very quickly, so if anybody wants a piece, just let me know, contact me via the email at the end of this, or call me on the phone, that's just as good. Send me a screenshot of the video, and that way I know exactly which piece you're looking at too. Um, anyway, let's get going, and Jackie can talk about a few of the pieces as they come out. Um, but this is an earthenware cone 04, uh, raised up about 20 degrees uh, in, a, in the program, uh, cone fire mode actually. Um, and uh, so this glaze is really good at cone 04, but you need to raise it up just a touch. So I'll let Jackie continue here. Um, this is a little jar. Here you um, go, Jackie. Okay, yeah, this is just the bottom of a jar. We'll be getting out the top later. So I'm just going to put things over here. Yep. Is that okay? Um, and make sure it's visible in the screen. Hold it close to the oh, camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a series of mugs. They're all on red clay. Um, the underpainting is with a yellow slip, and then I'm using underglazes on top. And you can see that I've got um, stenciled shapes here um, with hand painting both on top of the stencils and under the stencils. So we'll just go through some of the motifs. This this one. Um, has uh, stenciled areas like the cat shapes and the bird but then I'm carving into once I take the stencil off I'm carving into uh, the stenciled area to down to the red clay and then of course there's hand painting with the underglazes all around it okay is this am I holding it close enough yeah, just close your closer the better okay so anyway, I'll just pull these out and let you have a look, but you can see the stenciled areas, a lot of um, hand painting. Boat is a stencil. Once again, the, the cat shapes are stenciled, plus that, that those houses in the background. And then I'm going, once I pull the stencils off, I'm going back in and hand painting like the spots on the cats. And then of course the background is all hand painted. All with underglazes. I just use underglazes like paint and I mix my own, I mix colors on a palette just as though I were painting. And um, I always, I always um, put an under layer of slip underneath. So most, and mostly I use a yellow slip for my, my first coat. So that's, the, it's slip underneath, under glazes on top. What make of underglazes are you using, Jackie? Um, there's Amico Reward. There's probably some Duncan in there. And Spectrum. So they're all compatible, all mixed. And the reason um, is some, some of the underglazes, especially a lot of the greens, like here, you get a nice opaque sharp green um, but then there are blues let's see i can find uh, the spectrum has some interesting blues that are more translucent so i almost use them for glazing and intensifying my blues i think that's some of the spectrum there i'm, I'm never sure because i really do mix i mean it's like i it's like painting you know it's uh, there, I use, I mix on a palette. 
but different different underglazes have different qualities to them. Here, here's probably this is probably some of the spectrum uh, deep blue over over an amico. Yeah, that one really pops. Those colors are yeah, intense. So, so that's my favorite. So, so yeah, so yeah, you get nice contrast. And of course, the stencil versus hand painted. Oh my, have I got this on camera? The stencil versus hand painted areas. Um, gives you a nice sense of contrast too. Yeah, that's my favorite. And I'm, you can see these. It's about that distance. Is the this okay? Yeah, the camera's right in here. Yeah. Right okay. Again, the animal shapes are stenciled. Okay, that's that. Okay, so this is the next level down of the kiln. I'm going to make sure I, I take these off before I lift anything out. I've got, these are a smaller size mug, but they're done with um, the same way. So I'm putting, so what I'm doing is I'm putting yellow slip down and then some washes of um, underglaze, stencils, then stenciling, and then underglazing, underglaze painting. So it's, it's like painting. Once again with the, with the bird, I went in afterwards and carved into it to to get lines of the red clay underneath. And I also carved in here to get some detail on the roof and the windows, carved back down to the red clay in places. And also on this cat, those little lines are actually scraffito and on this roof too. I think the glaze turned out really good on these ones, actually. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. Let me... When you glaze with these pieces, you have to make sure the glaze doesn't get too thick or, it, or the, the color can actually, from the underglaze, can melt into the glaze. So this is a teapot, which is going to have a cane handle. And where's the lid to this guy? Uh, I think it's this one. So this is the lid. There we go. So we're going to put a cane handle on this. This over here. Um, going back to the mugs for a minute. This, this I, I call a good firing because all the detail that I drew in with fine brushes, look, even my signature, it's really sharp. It's not softened up. That's what I look for to see if my detail hung in. Okay, this is another teapot. And again, you know, good... The, like all that, those little details that I did in those little trees there and the little apples it really hung in there. And that's what I like in a firing. Like if I've painted it, I want to see it come out on the finished piece. And I'll just grab, this is the, the lid to this teapot. we got here. Um, oh, we've got some lids. The jaws will be in the next um, level down, I guess. Yeah, these are some lids to the some jars. And just sit on the um, I'll just put them here for now. 
and another lid. Oops, I'm having trouble finding me. I'm gonna knock these off. Okay, and another lid. This will be also on a jar that we're gonna pull out in a minute. And these are some stands for the jars that we're gonna pull out. There's three different ones. Okay. There you go. Okay, so this is um, the third teapot. Also, it's going to have a cane handle. So this is basically a little river motif with the loon on one side and birds flying. Um, got sort of other ducks in there and all the wildflowers. And where's the lid to this? Ah, here. There we go. So that's gonna be the lid to this one. Here is the bottom of this jar. And these are the ones that have the bases as yeah, well. Yeah, these ones have the bases that I pulled out on the other layer. We're going to photograph these pieces and put them at the end of the video, finished, alongside of a photograph of each piece before the glaze was put on so you can see all the detail before and after the glaze firing. Okay, what do you got here? Okay, here's another jar. Put it on him. Okay, this is a little jar. It's kind of the idea of a little garden house with a roof and it also has a stand one of the stands that I took. and that looks like it'd be nice to put some tea bags in it or some hand ground ground coffee and what else we got okay so the rest are more mugs so look how how nice the detail really hung in there and the firing, even this sort of textury painting that I did for the bird this time, it's all it's all there. All these little rocks with the patterns on them. Nice contrast between the hard edge of the stencil and the painted, paint more painterly detail. This 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 is the best firing and the best glazing I think we've seen for a long time. I carved into the horse's tail just to give a little bit of detail in the eye of the horse is carved. So the imagery is all done with stenciling, hand painting, um, carving in. That's the leaf, the little veins detail on the leaves is, is carved in. So sometimes I'm carving in and going down to another layer of underglaze. I don't know if you can see that. And sometimes it's going right down to the red clay again. And again, the bird has sgraffito detail.
seagull. This was a big batch of mugs. Here you have an example of that layers of blue to get a really intense blue, like laying over a spectrum blue over an amico. Almost there. This is a smaller size mug. That's an that's an Amico red, which um works really, really nice, and it's kind of, um, it's kind of translucent in the way that I've been using it. I use it a lot to put behind other colors because it really has a glow. And this is a spectrum orange that I sometimes waft over skies and things to warm up the color because it's very, um, again, it's like a, it's very transparent color. So some colors are more transparent or translucent and some are more opaque. And this is the last one here in firing. Oh, that's a really nice one. A couple of horses. I with like the, that pale blue. With the barns in the back. Yeah, that is, um, that's a Spectrum one. It's, um, it's actually, I think, Spectrum Lavender. And then maybe there, and then there's another Amico Blue in the sky in this area. And then, I've, again, I've carved in some places. Um, gives you a nice sharp detail. And that's the last one of the batch. Okay. All right, so um, once again, this is cone 04 for a glaze firing. And I did a, a ramped up a little bit higher to 20 degrees higher than cone 04. So um, in the program, you can do your cone fire and then you can do the cone it's called Konos, I guess, in their programming, and you just you can raise or lower a firing temperature by a few degrees. Um, so these were Kone 04 and raised up about 20 degrees with this clear glaze. Um, I also, because we have to pay, put glaze really thin on these so that you can actually see all the detail, because the thicker the glaze, the more the color gets kind of hidden a little bit um just by the thickness of the glaze and it tends to dissolve a little bit of the underglaze into the glaze so you lose detail so we glaze fairly thin on the outer edge but then i have to double dip the handle and i double dip the rim so that you don't have any roughness in the clay feeling through the actual glaze so that's important and um and as you can see uh and where well, you can't really see much but there's a little double edge of glaze at the top there for the actual smoothness when your lips touch it because I people I've had in my gallery people actually bring it up to their mouth to f see what it feels like to drink out of people these are like best friends people love mugs it's because you know if, if you break your favorite mug it's like your day was ruined so so basically um, you know you've got to make sure that everything in the feeling of a mug in the hand the size of the opening for your nose to fit in and all that kind of stuff has to be perfect but if you like anything in here we're going to have lots of photographs at the end you can just send me a screenshot of me holding it up right here that tells me exactly which piece um and uh they're all going to range my guess is i haven't asked jackie yet but they look like they're all going to range between like 85 89 
$1.99 as far as the Canadian dollars. So that's like a dollar twenty-five U.S. Uh, Canadian dollar to a U.S. dollar. So if you're in the U.S., you're getting there a lot less than that. But, um, but anyway, let us know. It's usually a, a very busy week for me packing boxes when I post this video. So uh, let's go on, go and ruin my week. I'll have to pack boxes all week. All right. So this is Jackie for the first time. Wave, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Vaughan signing off at westcobellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia. So thanks very much for joining us.